is uh, these young people have lost a lot of games in the fourth quarter the last two years. And we talk to them constantly about winning the fourth quarter. And um, thanks to our strength staff, our, our nutritionist, and, and our training staff, we're healthy. Uh, and we were fresh in the fourth quarter. And the guys played really hard and played really well. Um, we uh, messed up about everything in the kicking game. You mess up. So we've really got to go back and, and look at all that. Um, we had some misalignments on defense early. We had some missed tackles early. I think that's going to happen normally now with modern day football because you don't tackle as much in preseason. And then we tackled better in the second quarter, in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter. Uh, we were very conservative with uh, Sam Howell, obviously around the goal line early. And we felt like at halftime, you know, he's a quarterback. We've got to turn him loose. We've got to let him go. And he, he just played a tremendous second half. Um, I thought the game was over when he scrambled and made the first down and we got the face mask call. Uh, that took it back and, and then we gave them some opportunities, but the defense stepped up and, and uh, took over and um, forced some turnovers, which we hadn't done the entire game to, to finish the game. So uh, we screwed up in the end. We didn't hold the ball long enough uh, with the young quarterback, so we didn't let the clock run out, so we had to give them another shot. Uh, but I just uh, I feel like that uh, with the energy that we played with, the enthusiasm that we played with, the way that Sam played the second half or really the fourth quarter, um, we can eliminate a lot of coaching mistakes and, and we have a chance to be much better than we were tonight So or today. Um, I like Will Muschamp a lot. I know it's, a, it's hard when you're coaching against a friend, the guy that's coached with you. Um, so I hate that for him, but I'm, I'm really, really happy for these young people. And I, I've never seen a happier group in the dressing room than they were tonight. The, uh, uh, the 05 National Championship team was not any happier uh, than this team tonight. So I'm, I'm really, really proud for them. And it should be easier to coach them on Sunday. When you win, you can coach them harder. Because we can really get after them now because they're, they're, they know Miami's really talented and, and, and very good. Uh, so that, that's going to be an electric atmosphere on Saturday night at home, and, and um, they can't wait. Nearly. Yeah. Is this part of the reason you came back to stays like this, leading young men like this and getting the thrill of the victory? After yes, I, I think the, the biggest thing is Sally and I came back because we want to mentor the kids and young coaches and be around them. And, and that's really important. You can't do that without winning. I'm try again. And, and, and we had a, a wonderful 10 months. I mean, every, everybody was so good. We're selling tickets and we're raising money and th things are great. If you don't win. That all stops. People, people are a lot more excited about. I bet the 300 tickets we had left for Miami probably got bought in the last hour. That, that's the way fans are. They, they, they want to come and see somebody win. And we're in the education business during the week, and we're in show business on the weekend. And that's just what it is. So, uh, yes, to your answer that th those kids will listen to us better tomorrow uh, because they were able to go through the process that we told them would help them win. They won. We can do a lot better. We did first time staff together. We, we just messed up a bunch of stuff. Um, and they're so happy to. But uh, the other thing that Sally made me promise is, is we beat Colorado once, 38 to 14. And I was mad because it wasn't good enough to beat Alabama and USC. And, and I was miserable and yelled at everybody. We were 25 and 2 at Texas. And I was mad because we lost the national championship. And she said, if you come back and have an ugly win, uh, you better be pumped, and I am so pumped. So, um, Miss Sally, I'm really happy with this ugly win. So we can we can fix a lot of things. Nearly half their total yardage came in the first two possessions. What did you guys do after that to kind of hold them? Jay chance? Bateman's really good. He, he number one, we settled down. The linebackers had never been the game. And linebacker, I mean, can you imagine? Chas Surratt is out there as a quarterback this time last year. He's never been in a college football game on defense or as a linebacker, and we're yelling at him for lining up wrong. I mean, his world, his, his life had to be spinning out of control. <laughs> and then you've got Jeremiah Gimmel, who's never played. So poor Jay, who's emotional anyway, is, hey, no, no, move, go, no, go, no, no, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is it. And then we had trouble getting lined up at defensive end, and, and you lose Trey Morrison on the first series, and you've already got uh, Patrice Renee out of the game. Uh, for the first half, so now we got Storm Duck, who's a true freshman, never played in a game at one corner, and Greg Ross at the other corner. I mean, it was just uh, the coaches did a phenomenal job with taking inexperienced kids and putting them in positions to win. Coach, why did you um, decide to I don't know, take the handcuffs, I guess, off Sam? 
um, in the second half. Of well, we felt like we had to. We, we had three scoring opportunities, and, and we had some replays in there that, that we felt like gave him opportunities to, to run because he's a really good runner, obviously. Um, but for us to win, we're, we've got great running backs, but people are going to stack the box uh, unless we can throw the ball outside. And we also felt like in the second half we had to start throwing the ball deep because they were pressing us and they were uh, doing what, what we call bear coverage where they, they put the big guy over the center and they're covering the guards and, and they're just daring us to run the football. Uh, you're, you're not going to make any yards. And that's when we felt like we got to move the quarterback some and we've got to get him thrown downfield. What was the message to team and the locker room at halftime? message at halftime was uh, we have screwed up so many things and we're in great shape so we've got a great chance to win the fourth quarter we couldn't be in a better position how lucky are we um, so you just got to believe and you got to keep playing and i told the coaches your job is to walk out of our little meeting and walk into your meeting with the players and convince them how they're going to win the game and then my job is to convince the coaches and the players how we're going to win the game and and i always take the stats because that is important uh, we felt like we had to outrush them, and when we outrush the opponent, in my life, it, it's about 98% that you win the game. Coach, and then we got the two turnovers late, which which really helped. But uh, we just kept telling the kids, you got to believe. And and every time adversity hits, we told them to get more positive, get more animated. It, it, if you do something good, we're going to be all over you. If you do something bad, we're going to be picking you up because they they've had a lot of things happen bad in, in their careers the last two years, and and we just told them this is new, this is different. Coach, your team was down 11 in the third quarter, and last year typically struggled closing games in the fourth quarter, and then you went and scored 50 and unanswered answer points. What have you done, whether it be camp, practice, message before the fourth quarter that you think has worked? I, I feel like, uh, number one, uh, we've sold them on fourth quarter uh, every day at practice since we started uh, in February. Every day we have a fourth quarter drill. Every day. And we bring them up. And, and then what we've done is, is we felt like, uh, we learned at Texas that if you stay out in the heat too much, you wear them down and they get dead legged. So we take them out in the heat for an hour, and then we take them indoor for an hour. And, and they're in shape, but they're, they're fresher and they're climatized toward the heat because we didn't have anybody with troubles today, uh, but they're fresh. And, and uh, Brian Hess did a great job with them this summer. So uh, I was really, really impressed with their uh, energy um, and, and their um, conditioning late in the game. Coach, what did you think of this full court? Been doing this long enough, you know what kind of position this puts Will in. What did you say to him after the game? I said, Will, you've got a really good team, and I, it's hard for me to feel as good about this as I want to because you know I'm pulling for you to win. Good luck. How do you respond? If you're in his situation, how do you get a team back? Uh, what, he's done this a lot. He'll just pick them back up. I don't know who he plays next week, but they have a real hard schedule. I mean, we've looked at that like us. We've got 11 bowl teams. So uh, the thing he'll do is he'll go back to work like we did, and he'll try to figure out why they didn't play as well the second half. And all you can do is take what happened and show them why they didn't win the game, and here's the things we've got to do to fix it. That's all you can do. It's uh, We will do the same thing. Tomorrow, You will think in tomorrow's meetings we lost the game because we will be all over each other and all over them. And that, that, that's just, we've got to fix this. We can't have this to beat Miami. And so this one's going to be a lot of fun until about 3 o'clock tomorrow. Matt, this what is a you? little different than most first games for you. You've been in your first game before. You've been in national championship games before. It was a little emotional for you after the game. You got a chance to go and see your fans. How rewarding is this for you to be able to come back and experience this yeah, the first time? Yeah, uh, Jeff, it was, it was wonderful. I don't usually even raise my hands to fans or sing fight songs and all that. And I, I thought I should because they stayed, they were loud, they, uh, we stunk some. Um, somebody said they booed and I said, good, they really want to go in. Man, I booed too. Um, so that's just part of the process. But uh, I wanted to tell them thank you because we, we need them. And we need them Saturday night. We're going to need them in Wake Forest when, when we go up to Winston-Salem. I saw them play last night and they had a great win late. Um, but, uh, I did get a little emotional with uh, Allison afterwards because everything we told these kids that would happen happened. And, and those kids were so happy. And uh, my life and Sally's life is better when we get to see happy kids. I mean, what, the process that we've done, the, the people that we've brought in gave them opportunities to be happy. And, and I, I just said that, that's... That's that's the best thing in the world to see them do that. Coach, Coach Daniel, got time for one more before we go to class. What what was supposed to happen on that fourth kneel? That was he was Sam supposed to run around a little bit? Yeah, we were, we were we got a little work to do on our victory formation. 
we, 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 had, we hadn't worked on that as much as we should have. I guess we weren't planning on that. So. Uh, but it, it was good. Uh, we're supposed to have slow. The, the chart says with a minute 45 seconds, you can kill the clock when they have only one time out left. So we ran the ball once, then we're going to take a knee, and he's supposed to back up and run around a little bit, kill six, eight seconds, and take the knee. Uh, and we just got down a little fast. So we, we got some work to do there. But it just gave the defense another opportunity to step up. But if you want players, they're going out. I think that was some of the great quarterbacks over the years. No one of them was too much yard drives and led. What did you see before and during those drives from his demeanor? The thing we saw in, in practice is that he's mature and the kids really believe in him and he is a great leader for them even though he's a quiet leader. But he's very confident and, and he's so good on the run. And, and Ben Sean and Colt McCoy made so many plays when they're out of the pocket and they're looking downfield like to end one green. Uh, he's wide open and he didn't get that to him in practice. He's been zipping that out there so he'll be all over himself tomorrow because that's a touchdown with this. Um, but but he's just he's very accurate and he's strong legged uh, and he's tough. You can see he got his thumbs in him here.